in violation of the um, agreements um, reached between the workers and, 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 and communist parties in 1957 and 60, Khrushchev, in December 1960, signed the statement uh, where he brazenly described Yugoslavia as a socialist country. Now, one of the things that these statements had agreed was Yugoslavia was not a socialist country. But Khrushchev then goes on to say uh, that Yugoslavia is a socialist country. Between 1956 and the October 1961, Khrushchev still were not sure of their position. They were not sure <coughs> they consolidated their position. They still at least tried to pay some lip service to the concerns of other parties. But by the time that the, the 22nd Congress comes, that is in October 1961, they had become strong enough. And at that Congress, their whole revisionist ideology became not only strengthened and re formulated, but it also was systematized um, in, in every possible way. And step by step, from between the 20th Congress and the 22nd Congress, the Christians had perfected their, um, their revision of Marxism-Lenin. At the 22nd Congress of the Communist Party of the Soviet Union, Khrushchev launched a fierce attack on the Albanian Party of Labour. And he also launched a renewed attack on Stalin. All of this in order to be able to jettison the declaration and the statement and pursue a systematically revisionist line. And the program adopted at the 22nd Congress of the Communist Party of the Soviet Union brought in two further erroneous theses. Um, on, 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 to on, on top of the state of the whole people and a party of the whole people, they also brought in the question that it was perfectly possible to actually conduct, achieve socialism by parliamentary peaceful means. And there was no need for any struggle. And the idea was that the Soviet Union had become so strong, imperialists would dare not in any way attempt to interfere uh, with other people's revolutions. So all you had to do was elect a majority of uh, members to parliament and they could, they, they could, they could usher, usher in uh, uh, socialism. Instead of Marxism Leninism, the ideology from now on of the revisionists was bourgeois humanism. And their slogans were the slogans of the one time revolutionary bourgeoisie, liberty, equality, fraternity, uh, in, in, instead of the ideals of communism. In order to actually monopolize nuclear weapons in the hands of the then existing power, it's a, it's a funny business, this nuclear business now. It's, it's a bit like birth control. Everybody who's born is trying to prevent everybody else from being born. Those who have nuclear weapons don't want anybody else, else to come to nuclear weapons. So the then existing power said, well, they'll sign a nu nuclear non-proliferation treaty in 1962. The Chinese were literally given 24 hours notice that they were, uh, uh, that the Soviet Union were going to sign. The idea was to prevent any country, and at that time the only country that was likely to acquire these weapons was China, to prevent China from having these nuclear weapons and thus be able to resist nuclear blackmail by, the, uh, by, by, by US imperialism. The same sort of thing gets repeated further down the line. When new powers try to acquire nuclear weapons, the existing powers say, dreadful thing to have that. Right? It really is like, like, like members of Alcoholics Anonymous asking everybody else to sign the pledge. And, but of course, people don't really take very kindly to members of the Alcoholics Anonymous coming to ask everybody else to sign the pledge. And they usually very respectfully or not so respectfully, they ignore the advice. Khrushchevites got nowhere with their attempts of cooperation with US imperialism. You know the old Chinese saying, the, the drooping flowers pine for love, but the heartless brook carries on. So no matter how much Khrushchevite revisionists tried to cozy up to US imperialism, US imperialism 
made more and more further demands. And so Khrushchev, being the idiot he was, he alternated between adventurism and capitulationism. So in order to put pressure on the United States, he sent Soviet missiles to Cuba. Now the American surveillance found out that there were Soviet missiles in Cuba. So they installed a quarantine around Cuba and threatened a war. Khrushchev at the last moment blinked and withdrew those missiles. But it was just one of the things that, one of the other things that brought socialism's name into disrepute. There was no battle that the Bolsheviks could not win. They were never engaged in a fight that they lost. They were not into adventurism. You know, a lot of people were Trotskyites and left wing so they have accused the Soviet army not marching everywhere to bring socialism to the <laughs> So this is not the way to bring so socialism. So they didn't indulge in adventurism. But when Soviet Union was attacked, they counterattacked and did bring socialism <coughs> to, to lots of countries, as in the aftermath of, of, of the Second World War. So the whole idea, in an era where you have intercontinental missiles, to actually even keep on sending missiles further and further, doesn't necessarily increase your security. It's only a provocation. And what's more, I'm afraid, because of the rules established, it's a provocation which can only be done by imperialism, because they've already done it. Right? The moment a socialist country does that, it becomes a reason for ringing the war bells. And Khrushchevites should never have taken their missiles to Cuba. Or if they had taken, they should have never withdrawn. They, at the same time, uh, increased their collusion with, 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 the, with the Tituites. And various communist parties, congresses, in Bulgaria, in Hungary, in Czechoslovakia, in Italy, and in the GDR, became stages for anti-China performances. And more than 40 fraternal parties published resolutions, statements, and articles attacking the CPC and other Marxist-Leninist parties. And the CPC replied to these attacks between December the 15th, 1962, and March the 18th, 1963. It published seven such replies. But CPC was very careful not to directly attack Khrushchev or the Communist Party of the Soviet Union. They applied to the various surrogates who were launching attacks on China. You know, the, the leader of the Communist Party of France, the leader of the Communist Party of Italy, and a number of other people. So there are seven letters. They're, they're, they're worth looking at it again and refreshing your memory about that. Basically, what the whole thing came down to was well, these were differences between the line of Marxism and Leninism on one hand and revisionism on the other hand. Between anti-imperialism on the one hand and capitulation to imperialism on the other. Between proletarian internationalism and great power chauvinism. Because Christians would not uh, uh, <coughs> actually hesitate in exercising the power, you know, the physical power of the Soviet Union in trying to, to intimidate, withdrawing economic assistance, even causing border incidents, and doing all sorts of um, cra cra crazy things. And then they would go on and tell the Chinese comrades that they were anti-Soviet. And the Chinese comrades quite rightly said, ever since the complete negation of Stalin at the 20th Congress of the CPSU, you have committed innumerable foul deeds. Not all the water in the Volga can wash away the great shame you have brought upon the CPSU and on the Soviet Union. So you are anti-Soviet. You are anti-CPSU, you are anti-Lenin, you are the ones who are criminals, we, we are not. And the Chinese quite, were quite, right, right, quite right in, in saying that. So the, the, the Khrushchevites' main program was <coughs> revising the teachings of Marxism-Leninism on the question of imperialism, war and peace, on the question of proletarian revolution, because they're saying it can come, come peacefully, there's no need for violence violent revolution, on the question of revolution in the colonies and semi-colonies, on the question of the pro proletarian parties, and these are the ones which are inseparably connected with their negation of Stalin. 